Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Katie and today we're going to be talking about my favourite topic um, and that is sapphic books. So yes, I'm doing my little um, collection of Pride Month videos um, and so obviously we could not go without sapphic books. I probably should make two sapphic ones because just, oh, anyway. Um, yeah, and actually my, <laughs> for self-interest, my um, most popular video on my channel is like my favourite sapphic fantasy recommendations which I am very proud of um, and yes as it should be like my most popular video I think so I'm always happy for more sapphic recommendation videos um, and because <laughs> it sometimes feels like whenever I like see lists of sapphic recommendations or read or watch videos it seems like I've read them all <laughs> so any like more recommendations I can get I just like eat up um, so yeah, so if you're wondering where a couple of books on this list have gone, like, because you're like, oh, Katie loves that book, but why hasn't she mentioned it here? It might be in my, um, like, my best favourite queer books video that I did at the start of the month. So also I would recommend watching that one as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we're just going to talk about some of my favourite sapphic books. Um, although not like all time favourite because they'll be in my other video but still <laughs> um so yeah so let's just get started so the first book is a new release which actually is not out yet <laughs> um oh, I forgot that oh well oh well but anyway hopefully this video will be around for a long time so it will probably be out by the time this video goes up I think it comes out in early August 2022 so <laughs> if you've not pre-ordered it then pre-order it or if you're watching this video later in the year then buy it um, and that is The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean and this book just snuck up on me with how much I loved it it's so like crazy but also kind of hard hitting and like heartwarming and I actually wasn't I didn't know it was sapphic when I read it um, and then got the best surprise <laughs> so yeah I love books like that um, but so basically found this character called Devon who has been raised in this like society um, which is like a hidden society in the like human world called the book eaters um, and they basically they're almost a bit like vampires but they're not vampires because what they do is they eat books to like that's their sustenance um, and they've sort of closed themselves off from like human society so they sort of live it's, it's very sort of cult like <laughs> um, and they live in these like manor houses um, and they in these it, they're split up into these like families so there's like they're basically like nobility <laughs> kind of and they're different families so there's only about like six families left within these families that women are kind of treated very like commodities like because a um it's i think or i don't know if they can have children easily but they have barely ever conceived women so women are like very like highly prized but they like trade them well trade them <laughs> they like marry them off for like three years to another family to have a kid and then they get taken back to their original family um so it's very like patriarchal um and so yeah so Devon's been raised in this like world and she um so we follow that through flashbacks but then the main part of the book takes place like in the future where Devon has run away from the families with her son and her son's about five years old and her son is actually this variant of a book eater called a mind eater so instead of eating books they eat brains <laughs> which is really like <laughs> a bit disgusting but actually any sort of like body horror gore type thing I am not bothered by um I think it's a product of being a medic but um yeah, so Devon is like trying has run away in order so she can be with her son and to like protect him um, and she is sort of having to hunt down like people for Kai the son to eat <laughs> the brains of um, and then they get they're, they're all sort of tangled up in these plots um, because there's this substance called redemption which is like a, a pill that mind eaters can take to like control so they don't have to eat brains and they can eat books instead but redemption is like controlled by a monopoly of one of the families so only they can produce it but this family had like a massive coup um and they've all been like overthrown and stuff so now no one produces redemption um so devon's like trying to hunt down the remnants of this family to see if she can get redemption for kai and 
but then there's various like spy plots and stuff and it's just really good um it sounds a bit crazy like describing it but actually it's really good and there's some really great themes of like motherhood and identity because Devon obviously I, I'm pre I don't think it ever uses the word but she's very heavily implied to be lesbian um and I really like the exploration of her like identity and her because raised in this like bookie to society it's not even really acknowledged as a thing like because she has to like marry men and stuff so when she sort of discovers herself a bit more um I really like that and I just really liked everything I loved um like I love Kai as a character but also like Devon and Kai's relationship and like the length she goes to and like the sacrifices she makes and all it's just also good there's some really like heart-wrenching moments but then there's also some really like heartwarming moments I feel like it has a really good fan family um I really like the sort of love interest <laughs> slash um yeah she's almost like not an antagonist exactly but like I really love that dynamic between her and Devon um yeah so I just really recommend it was a great time then next we have Queen of Coins and Whispers and I feel like it's actually been a while since I've read this one or mentioned it um but I feel like this one is pretty underrated um and it is again <laughs> it's kind of that like spy drama type vibes um so I think the main character is she called Leah yeah so she um is like ascends is that the right word she becomes queen essentially when she's quite young um under sort of mysterious circumstances I'm sure her yeah so her uncle who has just died who was the king so has left a bit of a mess in the kingdom and so Leah has to try and like wrangle it back under control um and at the same time she also hires this like new spy thing thing <laughs> woman <laughs> spy woman called um I think she's called Xenia yeah um but Xenia has her like own reasons for taking the job um so yeah it becomes a bit of like a mystery and I just remember really enjoying this there's so much like political maneuverings and like underhanded spying and like betrayals and oh there's actually I feel like maybe there's nothing I love more in a book than a good betrayal <laughs> um there's a few books which I, but I feel like most of my favourite like betrayal queer books are in more Killian ones but anyway um yeah so that's this one and I would really recommend it so it's almost like I would say it's it's definitely fantasy and it's definitely like very court cool politicky which I really love but there's almost an element of like thriller to it which I really enjoyed as well um, and I really remember really loving the relationship in this one as well so yeah would highly recommend. I feel like this next book's probably borderline being like one of my favourite ever series but that is The Midnight Light and The Hollow Heart by Marie Rutowski. I feel like this series is like has a special place in my heart because A um well it's sapphic <laughs> um and the it's marie Rutaski and the winners like curse or I, whichever the first one is was like i remember reading that when i was about 14 or 15 and like one of the YA fantasies that i used to love like in the era before like booktube or anything i mean booktube existed but i didn't know it existed so that was when i would just like used to read books on my kindle and would get recommendations from like kindle used to do this thing where you could get like a hundred recommendations from what you'd already bought and I used to just scroll through there like looking for books that sounded interesting or oh, memories but um yeah so there's like that nostalgia but I would say if I reread them now I probably wouldn't like them that much but The Midnight Lie, Chef's Kiss, like Marie Rutowski's writing is really good it's very atmospheric I really love the relationship between Niram and Sid um, and The Hollow Heart and Sid oh just that her whole character is just amazing um, but yeah, so the first, the Midnight Life follows Niren, who's like living on this island, and this island is like sort of segregated. There's these, like, I think Kith is maybe just the like people who live there, but there's like full Keith and half Keith, and I think it's something to do with magic actually, how much magic they have. But the half Keith are very like treated very badly. Um, Keith are like basically the capital from the Hunger Games. Like they have all these extravagant parties and like a very sort of vain and extravagant type thing um and then spit Niren runs this like with her sort of aunt or like adopted mother or something along those lines like scheme to get people off the island um but she has a very sort of abusive relationship well she is being gaslighted by this 
um, my maternal figure um, which is a very I feel like it's a good depiction of it but yeah it's hard to read at times um, and then this mysterious traveller comes to the island called Sid and then um, she's like wanting to discover more about the magic so here and near him kind of yeah just I can't even remember exactly how it happens but anyway they grow closer and blah 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 um, and Sid if you've read the original trilogy has some connections um, which yeah I just loved I feel like it's a great like I don't know if it's really a twist or if it's obvious from the beginning but any, either way I loved it um, and then yeah so I would really recommend that series very atmospheric great relationship um, some really great just sort of kind of magical like undertones I don't know <laughs> um so yeah would highly recommend that series and then next we have She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan so this is part of the like sapphic trifecta um which was really big last year I do love all three of those books well love kind of I enjoyed all three of those books but I feel like She Who Became the Sun is the only one which I like really love um because I feel like the Jasmine Throne I enjoyed but I feel like it was advertised completely wrong um and then The Unbroken, I do like, but the relationship in that one is not, not my favourite relationship. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so but She Became the Sun, I feel like had it all. Um, so this one following Shu, who is a, like, a peasant. <laughs> um, and she, at the beginning of the book, her father and brother die. Um, and she, like, basically but she and she has been told she's been like destined for nothing but her brother's destined for greatness so then she sort of adopts she pretends to be her brother basically so now she's like in the pursuit of greatness um and then we're just kind of following her life um and she she i think she's kind of grows up in this like monastery um and then she sort of gets involved in the army somehow um i i think it might be i'm fairly sure it's based on like real historical um times if I can find when I'll, I'll put in the like little pop-up text um but I really love she as a character she is so like cheeky and charming and I don't know I just really loved her um she's like my favorite type of character in a way that sort of like slightly doesn't take things too seriously and like is very sort of ambitious but also kind of tongue-in-cheek about it I don't know I really like the love interest Ma as well she was great I love their relationship and there's also this other POV called Ooyang I might be pronouncing that wrong um and he has like a very <laughs> his chapters as well are a bit like um yeah they're good as well but I definitely preferred Chu um but anyway um so yeah i would really recommend that one especially if you like well like historical fantasy or high fantasy or sapphic fantasy and another series which i really love is I, I, i'll get it out um a memory called empire and a desolation called peace by arcady martin i will get um this one out because i feel like this one is where the relationship like properly shines <laughs> um and yeah so i really enjoyed this one and um, there was a it got a lot steamier than i was expecting um and i can't it's been a while since i read them so forgive me if i don't remember it very well but i feel like the main character is called mahit um like yeah yeah and she in book one travels so she's like growing up on this like far out space station and in book one she travels to like the center of this like empire which is like super metropolitan or cosmopolitan one of the two um and she's like kind of in awe of this like really super urban well not urban but like uh, advanced type city but she feels like she's almost betraying her homeland in a way um, and then she gets involved in like the politics there there's sort of this coup thing going on um and yeah and she's also guided she has a guide called three seagrass who like introduces her around the city and stuff and then they grow a bit closer um, and then this one we're still following Mahi and three seagrass um and they are sort of going to the edge of the like <laughs> not the universe but the edge of the like solar system the edge of the empire basically and they are like it's almost a first contact storyline um and so we're following that and we're also following the like captain of this ship which is like making first contact as well who i really liked as well i can't even remember her name but um oh nine hibiscus i love the names in this series as well um 
yeah so I really liked here as well um and just following everything it was just really good so yeah would highly recommend this series as well um and then also um Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant um I love this one it's sort of I would say horror maybe I feel like stuff that's like meant to be horror it doesn't scare me that much unless it's like psychological horror then I don't feel like I'm that affected by it like I said earlier any sort of gore or something it doesn't bother me really <laughs> um but so this one we're following this ship which is going to the Marianas Trench to try and find out like these like legend of these mermaids and try and find out more about them so this there was a mission like this about five years ago I think and um, but they all sort of died and went mysteriously missing and the only thing that survived was like this strange footage of these like weird creatures so now they've like they've equipped this new ship with like top of the range security and it's like loads of scientists and stuff going so they're going on this mission um and there's various characters on this mission so the main character so she's called Tori um and her sister was on the original mission uh so she's almost going for like vengeance for her sister um and then there's also this character whose name I think I've forgotten I think it's Olivia um and she is like the role that Tori's sister was originally in so there's a bit of like tension there at first but then obviously you know <laughs> um they grow closer and blah 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 but I really like Olivia's character because she has her like cameraman is this like himbo and I love the like lesbian himbo dynamic it's just god tier um so I love that there's also these like triplets two of whom are I either I think deaf deaf or mute they use like sign language um and then their and then their other sister as well um and I thought there was some really interesting stuff about like language and the sound and I just really loved all of that those kind of themes and stuff um and then there's various other characters on the ship as well um and there's all kind of a bit of a mystery as these like sirens start appearing but then and then the ship is maybe not quite as like well protected as it seems and yeah it's just really good it kind of builds the tension really like well and um, like it's very sort of insidious but like gets to you um and then also I really like the sort of all the like ocean imagery and like the kind of I feel like Mira Grant really captured the sort of majesty and like terrifyingness of the ocean um yeah so just would really highly recommend that one as well then because i know i said in my first video that i was not gonna only talk about sff <laughs> so we have to mention a couple of books that are not um so i mean we don't have to mention but and also i didn't even oh there's so many i feel like i will have to make a sapphic one part two because there's just so many like I'm looking up now like Master of Gin oh Malice and Misrule by Heather Walter just looking around my bookshelves just thinking <laughs> I'm gonna cheat slightly because this one isn't solely romance it's a little bit fantasy but I feel like you could pass it off as a Regency romance <laughs> um so yeah so this is The True Queen by Zencho oh Zencho also the Blackwater Sister is a great book and that's one sapphic as well um so this one i really loved i especially love this cover uh, um i can't i feel like it's been a while since i read it so i'll read the um synopsis so muna and her sister sakti wake on the shores of an enchanted island under a curse and this has quite stolen away their memories they plan to petition britain's sorceress royal for aid however to reach regency london they must first pass through the realm of the formidable fairy queen here Sakti disappears. To save her sister, Muni must learn to navigate London high society. But when the Sorceress Royal's friends are inadvertently embroiled in a plot containing fairyland succession, Muni is drawn right in. She must also find Sakti, break the curse and somehow stay out of trouble. But if fairyland's true queen does finally return, trouble may find her first. And then one of the um, top quotes is a joyous mashup of Jane Austen and high fantasy. So I feel like they do feel very like Austen-esque and I really love the relationship in this one. Um, Moon and the main character and the love interest I think is called Henrietta um, and I really like their dynamic and like the whole sort of Regency <laughs> drama and stuff just really fun and yeah so I would really highly recommend this one uh, and then Blackwater's sister as well follows this character who's like um 
think she's Malaysian but she's sort of grown up in America and she travels back to Malaysia because her grandma I think has just died um, and when she's there she sort of starts getting haunted by the ghost of her grandma <laughs> so and her grandma like makes her get up to all these like shenanigans and it's really funny um, but also a bit serious as well um, and yeah so I would also highly recommend that one um, and then also love, uh, One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Um, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that's very popular, so it's not the most helpful thing to mention. <laughs> but I do love it. Oh yeah, and the other one I will mention is The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley, which is a, like, ro Regency, Regency? Yeah, Regency-ish <laughs> romance, historical romance. Um, and this one I really enjoyed. We're kind of following this um to two characters one called tommy and she is part of this like big family um, and i believe there's like a, it's a series of romance books where each family like has a family member has their own like romance um and she is like very sort of doesn't like play by the rules or anything um and she meets philippa and um, who philippa is like this like wallflower and i believe blue stocking which i'm not entirely sure what that means but i think it's like someone who's a bit scholarly and her parents Philippa's parents want her to marry like a titled noble but Philippa doesn't really want this but Tommy like dresses up and pretends to be this like baron um who they're like her family's like father was actually a baron so it is semi-legit <laughs> but but anyway so Tommy's pretending to be this baron and Philippa like in, strikes up a friendship with the baron and then obviously discovers that it's not actually a baron it's Tommy um and then they have like a relationship and it's really cute. It's very like, it's very like rom com -y kind of, but I really enjoyed it and um, would definitely recommend. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to reading the rest of the books in the series. Although I believe, well, the first one I think is MF and I think the third one is MF as well. Um, but I would still read them because <laughs> I enjoyed the author. So yeah, read the sapphic one first and then read the other two, <laughs> even though that's kind of out of order. But anyway, um, so if anyone knows of any more like sapphic Regency romances, I would really love to know because I love historical romance. Um, but I feel like most of the queer ones I've found are Achillean, um, which I will probably talk about in my Achillean video because I love them. But oh, I read, what have I read? Uh, Proper English by KJ Charles. Um, I actually really enjoyed that one. It's like set in the early 1900s and it's like a house party and there's like murders going on. Um, and I love the relationship in that one. Um, and A Little Like Mischief by Cat Sebastian. Although that one is very short, but I did enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so uh, any like, oh, and Olivia Waits books. I forgot like um, A Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics and which other one have I read? Oh, what's it called? Oh. Not the second one, because the second one's like a feeding and care of waspish, wish, the feeding and care of waspish widows. I haven't read that one yet, but I really need to because I feel like it's milfy. Um, and whatever the third one is, <laughs> which I've forgotten, I can't believe I've forgotten. Um, but I remember enjoying that one as well. So yeah, um, oh, I feel like I could make. I'm gonna make another video, honestly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments the sapphic book you love, because I'm always looking for more recommendations. Um, and yeah if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already and i hope everyone's having a really great day and i will see you next time